Thanks, Amit. Always a pleasure. Uh, so this is part three of our series on passage plan. First two sections we have uh, discussed the basics of the passage plan, and we have also discussed a few common questions. Now this is in part three. What we are going to do is I'm going to show you an actual passage plan on the exit. Exactly how it looks. What are the things you must put in the passage plan? What are the things you must remember when you are making a passage plan? Because uh, maybe some of them, some of this information is you already know, and you already it's common information. I am sure some of the information you will forget. So I want to make sure no one forgets it, and we are going to do this very quickly. Uh, my entire my idea is not to make it a very long video, but uh, still to show you everything required. going to share a video which we have on our e-learning platform it is called uh, the maritime skill enhancer so i will uh, share with you the link a little later uh we are very big e-learning website so anything which you want to do on the ship for example the preparing the bridge for an inspection uh, you will get some you know specific courses for that purpose so it will be courses on passage plan courses on uh, egg days courses on uh, but remember these are the very these are not very two three day courses this is a short e learning session we are while from your tablets any one of those videos from the passage plan course and show you and this video is going to go very very fast so remember in between i may stop and explain a little bit uh, about what i'm showing so let me show you what i mean we have already discussed the basics. Now we are going yes. to see and look at an actual passage plan. We're going to check the passage plan today. And before we go over to the documentation, let us check what has to be physically marked on the chart. Now, just to be clear, these have to be marked even if you have put down in the printout. As we all know, the passage plan must be birth to birth. And today we are checking a passage plan through the Singapore Strait westbound on a loaded VLCC. Let's jump in. The vessel leaves the anchorage outside the eastern bank and uh, as you can see we have put down the status of steering motors, manning level. So what I am showing here, the vessel is leaving an anchorage, okay? The vessel is ah, okay. leaving from a berth. So the, uh, I mean, uh, the passage plan is basically from the anchorage to the berth. So the hand steerings uh, should be on and the bridge manning level, very important. All this will depend on your company requirements. What should be the manning level in the particular area? You have to find it out and you have to mark this on the passage plan. Manning status, whether engine room should be manned or not. Switch on the eco sounder. You know, that is what is written here. If, if you can see on the screen, the position fixing interval, 10 minutes by it's line of position. Important. Position fixing interval. Some officer, they are forget this one. Yes, you must never forget that. What are the contact channels, VHF channels where you have to? So mm -hmm. I have written contact VTIS East, VHF channel 10, four hours before. Uh, the, what are you showing us? It's calling manual correction. So you can make this one by you or something like that. Uh, there are some different EGDIS call it by different names. Some EGDIS, you have to use the manual correction feature. Some EGDIS, there will be something called a user chart information so when you say user chart basically it means that you have written something and that your whatever you have written will come on the exit so as hamad rightly said you have to enter these physically and manually on the chart also some of the information comes automatically like you see the waypoint name the anchorage is the name of the waypoint this yes. first waypoint this is coming automatically you don't have to write anchorage over there because in this in this particular exit Another like this may be different. So mm -hmm. name of the waypoint, the course 170.9 is the course. 
10 knots is the speed on this course. So all this comes automatically. So let us go ahead with the passage and see what else is there. Well, bridge and engine position plotting intervals, echo sounder on, VHF reportings which needs to be done. They are marked. Waypoints are named courses and leg lengths. Of course, the EGDIS automatically puts in the courses, leg lengths and the wheelover points. As we approach the eastern bank, the ICA changeovers and entering any special areas must be marked clearly. So we are coming close to the Singapore Strait. So you have an about point there. Why about point? Because once you pass this point, it will be very, very important. To something. Yes, you have to mark the about point before uh, entering a channel, before entering a river. Even if you are not stopping in Singapore, maybe you are passing through Singapore, but there you have to mark one at about point before entering Singapore Strait or any other channel which you are passing through. Some people think that you have to make about point only before you are arriving in port. Maybe your port is in, in Middle East, you're, you're, you're going to Rastanura or Saudi Arabia. So you're passing through Singapore, you will not stop in Singapore, but before Singapore, you have to mark one about point because after you reach, after you enter the Singapore Strait, it will be difficult for you to, uh, you know, if something happens, it will be very difficult for you. So before that, before you reach the about point, you must test everything, check everything, make sure all in order, test your engines, test your steering, everything should be in order. Once again, before arriving port, again, you will have another uh, about point. So it doesn't mean that in one voyage, you have only one about point. Most of the time, yes, most of the time you have one about point, but sometimes in the passage, you may have other about points as well. So we have this about point before entering the Singapore Strait. And I'm also mentioning that any special area, if you're entering a, you know, Marpole special area, which yes. you cannot throw it garbage. Can yes. Or special area for oil or special, uh, you know, particularly sensitive sea areas, PSSAs. Yes. These are all important areas where you have to mark. Okay. Safe speed is mentioned on each voyage leg. It's 10 knots here. The about point, as you can see before entering the Eastern Bank, no-go areas are marked on both sides of the coast. Anchor. I want to show you something very important over here. The vessel is entering Eastern Bank, uh, entering the Singapore Strait. You see the line over here is the safety contour. Yes. Okay. Now, this vessel is a very... It's a loaded VLCC. It's a very, very deep draft vessel. For this vessel, the depth, the safety depth is 25. I think uh, it was 26 meters or something uh, or 24 meters. Maybe I don't oh, remember now. Okay. Yeah. But if you can see the, in the chart, if you see this part of the chart at the bottom, inside the safety contour, there are some depths which are in light color. And the vessel is actually going to pass on those those depth, no problem. Because yes. see, this is this is this depth is 25 meter. Vessel is passing over that depth without any problem because it is more than the safety depth. That means it is more than the minimum required depth. So the minimum required depth is I don't remember now for this particular vessel, but I think it is 24 meters. 24 meters is the minimum required depth. So no, act actually, I forgot to mention one thing that. The depth over here may be 25, but actually you are, uh, you know, you have your tights and you have your other, uh, the, this, the don't go by this one, this particular one only, but it is automatically going to calculate your, so when you enter the safety contour, remember to check these bold depths, the bold depths over here, you see 24 meters is bold, oh, okay. 22 meters is bold. You have to avoid these depths because you are, this is more than your, I mean, less than your safety depth. This is what you do to answer the question. Last time we discussed that how procedure for entering a safety contour. When you go on board, if you want to understand this even more clearly, when you go on board, open this book NP232. It has the procedure written. What to do in case you are entering safety contour. In this chart, you can actually see the vessel entering the safety contour. I'll proceed with the video. Yeah, I get the in the anchors. The safety speeds are reducing when we are approaching the shallow waters passing over the eastern bank. The minimum UKC expected is mentioned over here. 
any security information if applicable they should be marked so as you can see on the screen security level 1 and yes. uh, you have different security levels at different stages so if you are going into gulf of aden or west coast of africa there will be other requirements based on that you have to mark your passage plan fall markings pointing towards the hausberg lighthouse as you can see here the nogo areas are getting narrower as we enter the channel safe speeds are changing uh, when we have crossed the shallow patch there's a every leg of the voyage every part of the voyage has a particular safe speed if you exceed the speed there may be problems your your squat will increase or your uh, you may exceed uh, you may violate your ukc policy so remember to be within your safe speed and uh, that safe speed is also marked along the passage along the line you know as you can see here you know six knots written here can you see the on this course on this part of the course six knots is written here okay once again the contingency anchorages contingency plans prominent marks as you can see this is a contingency anchorage now for different vessels the contingency anchorages will be in different places because your draft is different even yes. for the same vessel if you are loaded your draft is different your your ballast draft is different so your no go areas will change your contingency anchorages will change so do not think that it will be same no go areas whichever way you are going it depends on a lot of things lot of factors so you have to mark that very clearly contingency anchorage marked right there prominent radar marks are pointed out parallel index lines they should not be from any floating objects very important to take care of this very important this cross track distances must be suited to the passage yeah sorry very important for parallel index do not take anything from yes. floating buoys because some maybe when i start my career i depending on how much room you have on both sides the passage information for example contacting service boats or other information must be clearly marked as you cross safety contours the nogo areas marked within them become very very important spot soundings must be checked over here so the spot soundings tell you which areas inside a safety contour you can navigate any cautionary notice for example crossing vessels over here air drafts if applicable it's not applicable to this passage vts reporting requirements must be marked right here you can see the singapore requirements as you pass close to the shallow patch your no go areas show that any cautionary notes should be marked shallows keep coming remember all these things are very important to uh, mark on the chart whatever we have shown to be marked on the chart they are all very important information sometimes some of the information may not be applicable to your passage for example a transit bearing is when you have two things in one line and you draw a line from connecting those two things and you take a bearing that is your transit bearing so what that means is if you are on that line you can can exactly know where you are line of position when you see those two objects one behind the other one after the other this is called a transit bearing but in your passage transit bearing may not be applicable so for example if you are going from um, uh, somewhere like uh, maybe saudi arabia to egypt uh, it may not be applicable for your voyage for your particular ports but if applicable you have to plot that you have to put it on the chart your encs must be showing that very important to understand so you can watch the video again uh, to know